In their short one lump Lonedale, he has made eight appearances for Toronto this season, scoring five tries. I mean, Toronto just have got a, an outside back sort of cap rank, haven't they? They've got an absolute revolving door um, on that squad at the moment, and I think it's going to be that way until they're settled in Super League, it, it, it certainly seems. Oh, do you, but, yeah. do you think a part of it is the travel that people, you know, there's only, there's only so, so long that players are going to withstand the travel before agitating slightly for a move to ease that? I'm pretty sure it, it, the travel would be more inconvenient to get to Barrow these days <laughs> than it would be well. to get to Toronto even. I think it's just a case of they brought Matty Russell in, um, they brought Nick Rawsthorn in after the season had started, they brought a few other outside backs in and during the season, and I think Johnny Pownell's probably the weaker link in that squad, so they're moving on from the championship quality players and trying to bring in people who are more of a super league standard which is fair enough yeah. which is which is their model is that's how they seem to be working Wigan Warriors and Toulouse Olympique have agreed to extend the loan of Joe Breverton Breverton who's 22 has featured for the championship side uh, twice in wins over London and Batley and will remain in France for another month um, James Worthington though who was at Toulouse at the same time has now returned to the Warriors I think that's this is uh, a good sign for Joe Breverton that Toulouse have wanted to keep him around because Joe is in all likelihood looking f- for himself a deal for next year with someone so hopefully he can continue to impress there and that's a team that are on the up and if he can get in get in there or one of the other teams at the top end of the championship um, that, that bodes well for his career I think I think it's a good level for him to be at Yep, I agree with that. Uh, Halifax have signed Macaulay Davis on a month's loan from the Wigan Warriors in some more Wigan loan moves. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's been injured a lot um, over the last couple of years. It'll be good to see him get some game time at the Championship. I certainly think he needs to test himself at that level, so good luck to him. Rochdale has signed centre Jack Fox, who I think played on the wing for them this weekend, actually, on a deal until the end of the season after he'd been on trial at the Hornets. So uh, I don't know much about Jack Fox, but um, good luck to him. No, um, Whitehaven, poor little penniless Whitehaven, who hadn't got frappy bits to put together, have signed veteran prop Paul Wood on a deal until the end of 2018 that will see the former Warrington man play for free for crash, cash-strapped Haven. It's an interesting so, uh, one, that, isn't it? Well, they're able to you know, pay for his registration, his insurance and his kit, but obviously he's playing for free, so that's OK. Well, apparently there was... A potential that the move might get blocked at first, but um, it's a positive story. It's a positive news story, really. It goes good, good press for all one ball and um, <laughs> one ball ball, and uh, it, it helps. It helps keep White even in the news as well, and not just about the lack of money, doesn't it? And it maybe makes people feel like there's something worth investing in and getting behind when there's a big name that people will have heard of and is becoming a bit of a character on the free sports coverage through the rugby AM stuff. So so I think it's positive, even though it is weird that they have no money yet they can register more players. Um, they, they didn't know about the bill they were facing at the beginning of the season. They didn't budget for it properly and all that. Yeah, that is strange. Uh, anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, yeah, moving on to a club that is close to your heart these days, and it's the Coventry Bears who have entered. Which into... one? This is this is this is this is like dream move. This is. Yeah, they've entered into a dual registration agreement with the other with another club very close to your heart, the Hull Kingston Rovers. Um, yeah, how do you feel? I think I said uh, on, on Twitter, it's like my girlfriend and my best mates have uh, have become mates. <laughs> so uh, I think this is this is working out for me. Uh, hopefully. You know, we'll get to see some of the, the Rovers of the future up close and personal, which is brilliant for me. It will strengthen the Bears um, because of injuries and student internationals in particular. We've suffered a bit. It's, it's sort of a double-edged sword that we've produced and nurtured a lot of players who've gone on to make that England student squad. Yeah. And, and that we've also got players in the Welsh students and one in the Irish students as well. That's brilliant. With the Student World Cup coming up. Um, for student for nation, sorry, which is really good. However, it means that there's been two or three games on recent occasions where we've lost players as a result. So it's sort of a thing, and that's I think the aim of this dual race to cover some of those misses, along with um, mate, you know, some of the um, long-term injuries that we've got as well. Particularly, um, sort of, we had uh, one of the hookers um, come in on. Uh, Sunday, which was good, and along with uh, someone to beef up the pack, yeah. so I think that's that's very much needed, and I think, yeah, I think it's all good, really. 
good stuff. I mean, it doesn't affect the dual reg agreements that are already in place. I mean, I'm guessing York will still get first dibs on yeah. on, Coventry, on um, players from Hull KR, and Coventry will have to deal with the uh, deal with the second level on that. But um, it's still it's, bonus, I mean, it's still a bonus to get bodies in, like you say, for the Bears. It's anything, yeah, and, and we've still got Coventry still got to deal with London as well to bring in some of their players. So. Um, that's bit and that's worked out really well with uh, Cam Pierce Paul and Jacob Ogden who've been on loan recently as well. Good news, good news. Okay, and finally, more good news. Um and this 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 news story came around from treat, tweets from um someone called Raza Sadiq. Uh yeah. But um basically Danny Bruff uh, came to the rescue to save an under thirteens game between Ellie Moore and Hewitt, which would have had to be cancelled after the referee didn't show up and none of the parents were willing to put their hand up to replace him, but Bruff um, was happy to to go in the middle and and con- take control of the game, and apparently he did pretty well, even though he didn't have a whistle. Um, the story that's gone up on totalrl.com says one onlooker um, said, seriously though, he was the best we ever had, and did it all without <laughs> a whistle, and was very well, close, and it was a very close, hard fought match. Total respect. For so um, excellent stuff there. Obviously. Uh, it's one of those things that some, we cry some, out for, isn't it? The players who uh, sh- yeah. don't show necessarily respect to the referee all the time and stuff. We say, go out there and have a go at it I yourself hope, I hope see that, if it changes. I hope there was a gobby, yeah, I hope there was a gobby halfback um, <laughs> talking to him nonstop throughout the game to, to let him know how it really feels. Well, I just hope it does, you know, demonstrate to him what, what, the, what the job is and he must realise that what he was doing was in a much less pressurised environment than the people he gobs off to um, and maybe well, was, yeah. maybe this is the maybe this is the actual ideal way he should be spending his suspension for dissent to a match official is being a match official so it's all worked out really well in the end and maybe, um, as, well, maybe as well he should um, I mean it's in a, in, to be serious for a second it is a potential career you know he's coming towards the end of his career he could get a 10-year career as a match official quite comfortably. Do you think he'd be willing to put in the training to stay fit enough? <laughs> well, the the there is a question. Anyway. There, yeah, there, there's a question. But it's some, if you know, if you want to stay involved in the game, it's a, it's a perfect way after you hang up your boots. Um, obviously, as I proved, not everybody is suited to it in both um, temperament and fitness. Um, more, more probably on the temperament side for me. But uh, we will tell that story in full again one day. But um, yeah, so it is hard. But it's definitely a way. If, if certainly if you're an amateur player, thinking of hanging up, especially if you've had to retire early for injury. Oh yeah, definitely. A, yeah. a lot of injuries. Then it's it's definitely a great way to to stay in the game. So all credit to him for stepping up and do it. I think there'll be a lot of people. Well, as you know, you know there were however many parents yeah. there that didn't, weren't willing to do it, and you know being. A notable person he would have faced a certain pressure because imagine if he had had a real stinker that would have been uh, more of a story but and would have been everywhere but i bet it's an extra it's an extra buzz for the players uh oh it must, yeah it would do be you know what i mean it? to be being in the vault in the game involved that's a, that's a story they'll, 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 they'll take with them yeah yeah so that's the that's you, the news you can you can bet there was there was 50 players on each team <laughs> And anyone involved, uh, associated with Emily Moore or, or however, Hewitt will we'll all say they were in that game. In that game. Yeah. No, but great to, for uh, Raza Sadiq for getting that to everyone's attention and the news story rolling on from there. And um, brilliant news story. So nice one to finish on on this week's news section. We're now going to look back over the Super League match reviews. Super League match reviews now, sponsored by Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. You can find a wide range of toys, gifts, rugby league birthday cards and more at Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. Visit stores.eb.co.uk forward slash Rob's Toy Shop and on any orders over £5 you can earn 5% cash back and also 1% of your order value will go straight into the SLP coffers. You have to to earn your 5% cash back and send 1% to us, put in SLP discount at checkout. Um, if you want to give the full 5% to SLP2, you can do that by messaging Rob's Toy Shop when you make your order and you can give something back to the running costs of this show and it's all very much appreciated. Um, okay, it was round 18 of Super League. It was the State of Mind round. You would have seen the man van at fixtures across the yeah. weekend. Um, I... And they've um, just a little bit more of a plug for them. They have got t- T-shirts and uh, badges on sale now. Yes. So uh, do head on over to their Twitter. 
The pin badges do look nice. There is one uh, winging its way to uh, Swindon as we speak, along with the T-shirt, which uh, I will be uh, looking forward to wearing when I get it. Well, I got a freebie air freshener and freebie pen um, oh. uh, from, the, from the State of Mind stand at the Hull FC game on Saturday. And I also got to meet the uh, the main man, Dr. Phil Cooper, as well, which was which was very nice. Um, so hopefully that's uh, that'll help us get get someone from state of mind on later in the in the series to kind of keep the momentum up with the offload campaign and all of that great stuff um, hopefully plenty of people got to head along to the man van i could have done with the man van after work tonight i had a lot to offload um about my day at work today and obviously everyone it's it's great that our sport is highlighting you know mental health issues particularly male mental health issues when we when we talk about you know suicide being basically the the biggest and most preventable cause of death for men under 40, that fit men into our age under range Tim, and, yeah. and the age range of most of the people who get in touch who listen to the show as well so um so yeah please do support state of mind and make sure you take advantage of the opportunities out there to and, and not just support state of mind yeah support your mates as well yeah. you know if, if you think someone needs to needs a chat you know go and go and have a word if you think if you think you can Yes, completely agree. Okay, um, good average attendance from the State of Mind round as well. It was 8,465, yeah. considering Salford and Huddersfield and Wakefield were at home, three of the four worst attended sides. It's, and uh, the Soccer soccer World Cup's on as well, which obviously would have, you'd expect might have a little bit of a dent with people wanting to watch some of those games. Luckily, there wasn't an England game over one of them but even so you'd expect to have a little bit of an effect yeah of course yeah was one of them days on saturday as well maybe yeah uh down at cardiff yeah yep so um so good good stuff there okay and um thursday night's game no one was probably really looking forward to but i i didn't mind i believe it. i believe this parish uh, last week referred to it as a cripple fight <laughs> that was that was in there somewhere and it was it finished salford red devils 26 witness vikings 12 with the vikings having left led 12 8 at half time uh, and not unexpected 2242 watched james child referee this one from the aj bell Stadium. Do you want to take it away with the first of the fan reviews on this one? As always, Thursday games popular with the listeners. Yep, Neil McEwen or McKeown or Mickey or McChristmas says, typical witness shite dished up. Good first half, but yet again, another scoreless half. We gave Salford the ball time after time and made Louis look like JT. Houston, Houston, however you want to say it, harshly binned, but was rightly sent off for descent. However, 60 seconds later, Tarsi done another high shot and not carded. Another case of inconsistency. Witness board need to strengthen now instead of planning for 2019, or we are championship bound. Ah, Paul O'Brien, another witness fan, said, where do I start? Well, not a bad first half, but the second was shocking. Poor in attack and defence, lacking in ideas and giving away far too many penalties. The yellow for Houston was harsh, but you cannot clap the referee and rightly deserved a red. The players don't look interested and things need to change. Feel my beloved Vikings are going down. Yeah, very similar themes from both of those two, wasn't it there? Yeah, oh, it's a shame we didn't make you, this, re, re, you read this one up. Uh, Shoddy Amongo says, The true ginger pearl... Sorry, that's the true ginger okay. pearl. Backs two tries and, fair enough, yellow card. A tense affair, as you might expect, but Salford stuck around and came through in the end. Wasn't expecting great quality, but I actually enjoyed watching it. Yeah, uh, Paul Chamberlain got in touch and Paul said, having signed Wellington and Santon Albert, witness might as well go for the hat trick and get Prince Albert. It's the only <laughs> silver where they are likely what about, to be... What about Uncle Albert? <laughs> it's the only silver where they are likely to be holding in their hands anytime soon. I thought... Salford were excellent in a surprisingly good game as Bourne out effectively winning with 14 players. Commentary highlight was the tromboning of Arvan as if he is Valentine Holmes. The yellow cards also hilarious. Yeah, and uh, Phil Nadin says uh, Salford was just too good for witness tonight. A good start from the Vikings, but it didn't last long. Salford took control of the game early on and did our goodest news. <laughs> <laughs> Hay fever is affecting us all. Um, this week on Super League Pod. Oh, uh, sorry. Salford took control of the game early on and didn't really look like giving Witness any proper chances. I think Witness are going to struggle in the qualifiers, especially if they keep getting injuries. Yeah, I mean, or, sim- or dismissals and stuff like that. Uh, probably the 
first place to start in this game. There was two sim minions and one of those turned swiftly into a red card. And, you know, I would say I thought both sit.